Good afternoon, folks. This is Darth Ravage 07. Come to you today with another Micro Galaxy Squadron uh, quick review today. Uh, I've had this for like two weeks. Uh, it's like every time I turn around, stuff just gets set out for Christmas. And the, this was like before the 10 1 Street date. So they went ahead and uh, scanned it real quick before I took it to the front. And it rang up. I'm so excited to be bringing this to you today. I think I've seen a couple other reviews of this very pack online, but make sure if you haven't visited my channel before, make sure to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff down below. Thank you again, all those who have subscribed. Help my channel continue to grow, guys. I really, really want to grow up and be like the other YouTubers out there one day. But till then, let's turn this around and get this uh, battle pack opened up and see how cool it really is. Thank you again for watching. As I turned the aisle at my downtown Target, I was looking for the little Starship light armor class stuff and this big bad boy sitting there next to the, the Battle of Coruscant 3 pack. It's none other than the Destroy the Death Star battle pack. It's where they did the onslaught on the Death Star 2. Because you got Lando, you got Nine Numb, you got uh, some indoor troopers and a couple of TIE pilots. And these are the TIE interceptors that seem to have gotten lost in the Amazon delivery as we go along through there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the box. We do have some lights and sounds. I've got the uh, very first one with the Obi-Wan and them uh, downstairs. I don't have the Hondo one from uh, Galaxy's Edge just yet, but I will get a hold of those. And I'm missing probably, oh yeah, the Death Star Trench run. I think it come with a couple of TIE fighters, just regular TIE fighters. but. This is all the stuff you got on the hologram blueprint cards here for both the Falcon and the TIE Interceptors. You have all the little stuff and things, details inside of the uh, bay area where they, they meet in the back of the ship. Then you got the cockpit that opens up to 90 degrees. You got some retractable landing gear. Um, that looks like a stand, but we'll have to take a closer look at that when we get to that point. That'd be awesome if it has a stand. Uh, these do need some stands. You got 90 degree opening there at the top of that. And you got a little engine thing that opens up and the pilot goes down in there. And if I'm not mistaken, it should have it eject to get the figure back out. But once I put them in, they usually stay in. You got motion activated lights. And let's see what all that entails here in just a moment. This is the other side of the box with some really gorgeous art. And these things are top notch. I don't think this is, it is labeled a uh, number 114 in the Micro Galaxy Squadron series. And uh, I'm just shocked that it's here already, guys. Now, if you happen, let's get this thing open, do some measurements. Oh, before we get there, I want to do this real quick. This thing is just a little over 19 inches across, up and down wise. It is right at nine inches and is about. Five and three, nope, five and a half inches, just a little over five and a half inches wide in its box. It does take up quite a bit of real estate. So we're going to get these guys out, get these guys measured, show off the little accessories, and get into the ship, meeting the details. Thanks again for watching. Real quick before I crack that bad boy open, I wanted you to get a little scan right there, pause and scan there. If you're looking in stores and they haven't got it set on the shelf, hopefully this will help you snag your copy of the battle pack. I open a majority of these from the left hand side of the pack. I don't guess it matters really. If Hasbro is the master of repaints and retools, these guys are uh, Jazzwares are certainly the masters of blister packaging and, and cardboard art. This is good heavy stock, excellent cardboard to keep everything safe. So let's get the Falcon removed real quick here. If I can move something on the top. In the top, yeah, it makes me afraid to pop it out. Right, this one will hang it or hang it. I just did that to get backwards. Boy, that is a pretty ship, guys. This is the first time I've opened up any of the Falcon. They're well, I got the other Falcon downstairs, but definitely really pretty good heft to it and weight. Let's put that down there. It does appear we got a couple of flight stands for those interceptors right there. I hope everybody can see that all so good. I probably just messed that up. Forgive me. 
these peel out a heck and gone easier and they do have that button on the bottom so there's an interceptor so tight dudes this one's in there deeper let me get this out thanks again for watching Here's another look at that backdrop. I'm going to put it back inside the box of the plastic blister just in case there should be something wrong with this set. These things are the bare minimum, but to give it the appearance of hovering, I guess that's what this display stand is for. So there's that. And that right there. Boom. That's so cool. And another cool feature with this whole set, and you guys have probably already seen it probably with other YouTube reviewers that have done this, like Kevin Tanner and some other guys. You got this little thing where if you flip one, you get both on one side and on the other. So the landing claws are down and can sit right there on the table and let you arm this thing up with the accessories. You got one quad gun that you gotta get there, nicely detailed, very, very sharp looking. You got a good dish, because you know whenever Lando did that whole deal and he said uh i promise to return her not a scratch well we know those of us that seen that episode six knows that it actually got a scratch so there's that very nice detail where it got a scratch so here is the falcon without it there is the falcon with the quad gun we're going to zoom in on that just to show off that quad gun and it can swivel around there just also nice i got the actually landing gear done there and you got this thing that it can spin in place and it easily pops out to show you the damage. I just landed it on its belly, hang on. And here's where the dish got sheared off on its little amazing Death Star, Trent, or Death Star core run, along with all the coolest battle damage from that and the vents there, just, that's just so cool, the detail there. I gotta take a look at some other things real quick. I wanna take a quick look at the bottom of this. The quad gun's molded in, doesn't do anything. It'd been a nice feature if it would've spun around and stuff, but you had to actually manually move it around up here on the top. That's okay. Uh, those docking things, I can't wait. Cause like, everything hit all at once. The HasLab for the Ghost came like and uh, tied up some resources and it's just like, bam, we just get no more through paying that off and then this set came out. But uh, was able to apply the target circle uh, savings. I think it's still good through the end of the day today. So you might want to go out to your stores and check that out as well, guys. A quick look at that cockpit. And it's beautifully uh, got a great black wash there throughout. And we'll get the figurines in there in a little bit. But I can't wait to actually sit in that whenever I get to go down to Disney again to do the Galaxy's Edge stuff and hopefully get one of the Hondo winning falcons on that trip i do we got I believe we got some battery installation to do so we got to remove this cover and the little uh top of the quad gun to get that in there so we're going to do all these steps real quick here goes the quad gun it needs to be oriented forward and it removes and then you take this thing and just kind of lift it back and up and off of this other place right here boom and it reveals the inside with some more black wash detailing and the battery compartment is there so like we're gonna get this off i need to grab two AAA batteries which are not included guys excuse me no there were three AAA batteries just so y'all can see that got them installed now i'll do a test so while i got the back end of this thing off i wanted to show you the hollow chest area of the falcon looks very very nicely detailed and whatnot this is about where I'm gonna stick the extra broken bit dish, just to kind of like give it a place to hide away there because you got a smuggler's hold right here underneath the four panel that is removable by or via a tab like right here. And it just kind of, that's where you can do the smuggler's hold and it's got another tab there that goes right back in. So, I mean, you got the smugglers tab in there that is so cool guys the attention to detail is sublime i would have liked to have stuck that dish down inside of there but uh it's got a little walkway uh molded in not that the, the figures could ever use it because the figures are like one inch tall and then uh right here you can take and push down like on these top two pieces right here and you can get the ramp to come down and or you can untab it and assimilate that but there again it's like 
it's nice that they put it there, but it's not. It doesn't actually perform a function where you can like display the figures to stand beside it. I'll show you that before I put them in the side of the Falcon. In the middle piece, you can actually sit a figure in there and have him sit there and pew 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 pew. pew. So we'll put one of the troopers in here. In most video games, the Falcon Chase cockpit. This is kind of the, that little like bubble. So there's that. The six pack of figurines. Make sure not to lose these. These are small. They got two points of articulation and are very nicely painted and detailed. I'm gonna take one of these guys out and get him in that gunner chair, like I was saying. But before we go to the gunner chair, I wanted to show you him on the turntable. Do a quick little spin. He stands up pretty good there. So that's really kind of cool. Let's zoom in a little bit. He stands about one inch tall and is, is less than two eighths wide. Instead of stressing and getting you know stuck in a vi vicarious position there, you can do this to get the figure seated and placed into controls, and that's just so cool that you could do that. And there he is inside of the cockpit there. Man, that's sharp. I do got the lid clicked back on there, but once you get the batteries in, be careful that turns it on, that makes it shoot, and all the stuff and things. It takes about 30 seconds for it to fall back asleep again, folks. Once that you go to slide this little guy back in there and you can see him in there getting ready to shoot it up and stuff, make sure to get it lined up like this so then whenever you do it, you don't have this flip out on you. Whenever you gotta flip it upside down, I've had that happen to me a couple of times already, but that is just so cool, man. So we're gonna get this guy right here. Boom, there it is. We're gonna get the cockpit open and get Lando 9 and the other trooper in, or yeah, the other uh, Rebel trooper in the cockpit. So we got Louie inside the cockpit there in the left back seat. We got Richie up here in the chair. He would be Richie because he'd be on the right cockpit seat right, right here, but right now he's over here. And we get, uh, I think it's Lando and Nine Num in the, the respective seats after we measure them. Here's a real quick look at Nine Num, and he looks fantastic, guys. Great paint detail, great wrinkles throughout, and the other stuff to make it pop. I really do like this. I can't wait to get a hold of the Hondo set. He's one of my other favorite characters from Rebels. And let's go ahead and get the nine measurements real quick. And he's just under an inch. And then let's see, his width is about the same as the Trooper. Actually, it's less than the Trooper, so he's skinny. He's a skinny mini. Let's get him into the ship. Nine's ready to drive this thing, co-pilot it. Next up, we're up to General Lando Calrissian, and he looks amazing throughout, guys. I just, I'm so tickled to have this stuff in hand. I geek out at the smallest little details and features. Let's get him measured real quick and get him in the Falcon. I don't really think that Lando's had his V8 today, so he's going probably, he's like, if he's standing straight up, he'd be like right at one inch there. And then as far as width, let's turn this around real quick and he's a little bit wider just due to the proportions there uh, about two eighths of an inch let's get him in the falcon now it's a party we got lando in there in his old ship with the cockpit closed you really can see in there just barely real quick like i wanted to show you the tie pilot and uh being it's black mostly gets drowned out, but they did manage to get a couple of silver details in there and I drop it so easily. Let's get them on the turntable and measure. And the top pilot stands at about a little above the one inch mark, maybe even a half of an eighth taller, than one inch and hey, there you go. I'll let y'all see it there. Let's spin this real quick and hopefully he won't fall. I see that he's gonna be wider at the head. He's almost two and a half. Two, two eights. There's that. And now we'll get him seated in the TIE Fighters. So, hey, did you hear about those new TIE Defenders? Really? Really? No, really. Oh my gosh. That'd be so cool, Jazzwares, if we get some TIE Defenders since we got TIE Defenders. I meant TIE Interceptors. We got TIE Interceptors now. It'd be awesome to see some Defenders. And these bad mamma gemmas look awesome with the pilots in it and all around together. Here's a quick look at the starboard side of the right side of the, the tie defenders. Or defenders, I got defenders on the brain. Tie interceptors, excuse me guys. I really, really like to see tie defenders get made, but this is the tie interceptors from the AFU. Looks really, really nice. The port side 
and I just original trilogy stuff like this it's like the best thing ever I just I love having these on the, the model and the scale like this just this is going to look good on the collection shelf uh, the battle damage is like exquisite that's what's different from these versus the regular retail release I do believe as we zoom in here and look at the top of the the, the fighter there you can see the damage there you got a nicely painted little uh, red dots there just like you see in the movies you can take these little stands back off and you can sit there and swoosh it around the house if you want to a little the damage on the side of the, the tie fighter there the, the detail on all these micro squadron galaxy uh ships are exquisite and the thing i want to warn you about is like when you find these in the store guys these tips here were smashed in on the very first box so i looked behind found this box right here back here behind the smash box and because they just sit there and these are aimed at the front and then the, these little guns get bent all to pieces uh depending on how they're handled at the store there or at the factory there where Jazzwares load them up in the boxes to ship them out but uh these things are awesome guys now we're, before we're going to measurements of both and stuff and some final thoughts i want to demonstrate that millennium falcon there in the background as it has quite a few sound effects and what have you we're going to start off right here from the rear profile you push this side in you get a startup noise and so those lights stay on for up to 30 seconds and then it goes into sleep mode you press down one and you get press actually it's press and hold the button and you get some hyperspace uh, sounds there and then uh you can tap this one right here and you get some blast effects from those quad guns and you can hold it down and you get like a chain quad gun effect which is absolutely flipping awesome. I love the way this looks with it all lit up there in the back. I don't know how good it's coming over a camera, but it looks really good to my naked eye there. So then you can like take this thing and you can like press it and you can get, you can move it around and it's got this, a circle and you flip it upside down. You hear it. That's so cool, guys, that they thought about this with the gyrometrics of this thing. So you can do it one more time with some blast effects. You can get all those little play swooshable features going on there at once. You got all the landing claws out. They all do retract, which is really cool. What happens on one side happens to the other there. And that's looking at the belly of it. Put the sound effects on. And then you can go back over here and do another back flip. You can have that thing blasting away the guns. Gosh, that's so cool. All right, we're gonna land this sucker and get in some final thoughts. Before we get into the final thoughts, I meant to get some measurements. So we're gonna whip out the old trusty thing and look from port side to port side. The piece of this that reminds me of the ghost is about eight inches wide and we're going to do it from front to back now and we get from tip to toe like 10 inches long there along that axis there uh height wise it's every bit of two and a half to the quad gun from the platform there with the landing gear up and i'm not sure of anything else uh i about do it for the falcon let's get this guy over here to the side and get one of these guys on the table here and this is with flight stand. This thing is going to stand up about how tall here, guys? Looks like three, just under three and a half inches high from base stand to the top of the ship there. And then the width of the wings is right about three and a half. And then we're going to get the fuselage real quick. Take a look at that fuselage. And it looks to be from bottom to top one and a quarter so that's about, about gonna do it for that guy too now we're gonna have some final thoughts on this set thanks again for watching and staying with me this long final thoughts on this set guys if you're a fan of the original trilogy this is an absolute no-brainer 
I uh, remember on days that I was sick from school, I always wanted a really decent Millennium Falcon, and it wouldn't happen until I became 48 years old, 40 something years later. And you can see that this little thing right here comes down like that, and it'll also clip back up into place there. So you got like the little ramp that they come in and out of. You got the corridor that the ghost borrowed from this ship to give you that cross like docking feature in space. And uh, I'm hoping that Jazzwares does come out with a ghost in the near future. But this, for the original trilogy fans, uh, Star Wars fans, Millennium Falcon fans, and I like the Interceptor just about as good as I do the Defender. This is a no-brainer set to pick up if you see it. It is only at Target there. As you can see, it's number 114 in the Micro Galaxy Squadron series. I very much highly recommend this to any Star Wars fan. Don't hesitate grab this thing it is something else the gyros the gyro the gyro functions with the ship being able to flip it and do the sound effects is awesome uh it does take three AAA batteries that do it is not sold with it so uh just wanted to make you aware of that i always keep a few extra batteries around the house in case something like this shows up i refuse to grow up and uh will forever be a star wars fan and uh wow this set just really does not disappoint now I've got to crack open that AT-AT walker because that was like one of my earliest Star Wars memory, memories ever. I was just old enough to start remembering things and I heard, I am your father, you know, for the first time. It was like the biggest impressionable thing and I've been hooked on this stuff ever since, guys. Thanks again for watching my channel and sticking with me through this long, uh, quick review. Uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff down below. Thank you again to all those who have subscribed and, uh, just want to wish y'all a good week out there. Have a great week. And may the force be with you all, always.